7 mistakes to avoid when photographing the moon and the supermoon. Hello, photopulers, Rafael the Bar here. All photographers make mistakes at some point when photographing the moon or the supermoon. And in some cases, we repeat these mistakes over and over. So today I want to take the opportunity to analyze those mistakes to learn from them so we don't make the same mistakes again. Let's go! Ok, this might seem obvious, but no plan, no moon. Antoine de saint exupéry once said, a goal without the plan is just a wish. Truth is that the moon is one of the celestial bodies that's most difficult to predict and to photograph. Above all, when you wish to photograph it in a specific position relative to your subject. The last thing you want to do is to get out there and try your luck. Because 99.99% .99 of the time you'll fail. The moon will never be where you want it to be. You'll need to plan your photos. Just use photo pills to figure out the right shooting spot and the right shooting date and time. The moon is where you want it to be relative to your subject. So you can go and capture it. This way you'll be able to use the moon to tell the stories you want. How do you plan your moon photos? That's easy. Watch this video. No subject, no joy. Stop photographing just the moon. I mean, don't get me wrong, photographing the moon alone is very cool, you know, photographing all the details and craters of the moon is super super cool. But including an interesting subject in your photo will bring your moon photography to the next level. Because different subjects give you the opportunity to tell different stories. Look for mountains and rock formations. Look for buildings, bridges. And if you don't find anything interesting, just use a human figure. Therefore, and this is critical, this is key when you're photographing the moon, just get out there and try to find as many possible cool subjects you can. Subjects that can be photographed from the east and from the west, because this way you'll make sure that the moon can be aligned with them. And once you find them, start planning like crazy. Has this occurred to you? You plan a cool photo of the moon with a subject you like. And when the time to shoot comes, you realize that it's too dark to correctly expose both the moon and your subject. That's impossible to get in one single exposure detail on your subject, on your foreground, and on the moon. So you're forced to decide between shooting a double exposure, one exposure for the moon and one exposure for the foreground, or to shoot a full moon silhouette. And yes, of course, photographing full moon silhouettes is fantastic, it's so much fun. But often you want to get detail in the foreground and in the moon in one single exposure. So how can you do it? You'll need to shoot during daytime, golden hour or blue hour. Is when there is still enough light to correctly expose uh, in one single exposure both your subject, your foreground, and the moon. Of course, this is not true when you're photographing uh, subjects that are lit at night. For example, when you're photographing buildings in cities, you can photograph in one single exposure uh, both uh, your building because it's lit and the moon. But natural light at the time of the shooting also defines the color of the moon, how powerful the moon will look in the photo. During daytime, the moon is faint and kind of bluish. During golden hour, the moon is strong and yellow. And at blue hour, the moon can be yellow and it can get a kind of a pinky color. So, long story short, when you've planned your moon shot, always check the natural light you'll get at the time of the shooting and you'll get natural light in panel number 3 in the photo pills planner. And as you know, natural light is linked to the elevation of the sun. So for example, here on uh, July 13, 2022 at 9.36pm, the time of the shooting, the moon is aligning uh, with the Favarich lighthouse from super far away. My shooting spot is the red pin position and the elevation of the sun at the time of the shooting, according to the top panel, is minus 4. 74 degrees and this means that it's blue hour. So the moon will be pretty powerful. It will be probably you know between yellow and maybe if I'm lucky pinky. And during blue hour I'll be able to correctly expose in one single exposure both my subject, my lighthouse and the moon. 
So the question is, how do I know the type of natural light based on the elevation of the sun? Super, super easy. When the elevation of the sun is above 6 degrees, it's daytime. When the elevation of the sun is between 6 and minus 4 is golden hour. When the elevation of the sun is minus, between minus 4 and minus 6 is blue hour. Then we have the nautical twilight. It's when the elevation of the sun is between minus 6 and minus 12. And the astronomical twilight is when the elevation of the sun is between minus 12 and minus uh, 18. When the elevation of the sun is below minus 18 degrees, it's night time. Well, this is just a small summary. If you want to master natural light, watch this video. When you're designing an image, the proportion between the moon, the size of the moon, and the size of your subject matters. If the moon is too big, or too small compared to your subject, you might not like the image. Me, personally, I love the two photos we just seen. At the end of the day, it's a matter of taste. The good news is that you can literally take a piece of paper and draw the photo you want, how big the moon you want compared to your subject. And then you can calculate the shooting distance you need, how far away you need to be from your subject to get that proportion. To get the size of the moon you want compared to your subject. And if you're wondering why I have not mentioned the focal length, it's because the size of the moon compared to your subject only depends on the shooting distance, how far away you are from your subject. The size of the moon compared with the frame, with the photo, depends on the focal length. And here we're talking about the size of the moon versus the size of your subject. So the shooting distance is the only variable we'll take into account. Well, to calculate the shooting distance you need to get a certain size of the moon, you can do two things. One is to apply the Photopills rule of 100. That tells that for a desired size of the moon, let's say that you want a moon size of 10 meters, all you have to do is to multiply the diameter you want by 100 and you'll get the shooting distance. So 10 meters by 100 is 1000 meters. So if you go away one kilometer away from your subject, the moon will have an upper size of more or less 10 meters. And the second thing you can do, and I strongly uh, recommend you to do it, is go to Photopills and plan your moon photo and use a panel number two to read the shooting distance and also the size of the moon. If you place the black pin on your subject and you place the red pin on your shooting spot, the top panel will tell you the distance between the two pins. So in this case, in this plan, the shooting distance is 10.8 kilometers. And this gives me, gives me a size of the moon, and you have it in brackets, on the top panel of 104.9 meters. It's a pretty huge moon. I know that the size of my subject, the Fabarish Lighthouse, is 28 meters. So having a moon of 100 meters is huge. You might love this proportion or you might hate it, but this is the size of the moon I'll get from my shooting spot, from the red pin position. At the end of the day, it's all about changing your shooting spot, making multiple plans from different shooting spots, different shooting distance, until you find the size of the moon you like for the photo you're looking for. And if you wish to learn more on how to get the size of the moon you want, I recommend you to watch this video. Amazing video. Sometimes when you make focus on your subject to have it tack sharp in the photo, you'll see that the moon is not sharp, the moon is out of focus. Depending on the camera settings you're using, the moon will appear out of focus in the photo. Why is that? Well, you're getting the moon out of focus because the hyperfocal distance falls behind your subject. The hyperfocal distance, which is just a distance, is larger than your focus distance. The distance between you and your subject, where you're focusing at. And if you don't know what's the hyperfocal distance, watch this video. You should know what's the hyperfocal distance. Watch it. So if you want the moon to appear exceptionally sharp in your photo, you need to make sure that the hyperfocal distance is shorter than your uh, shooting distance, that your focusing distance. You need to make sure that the camera settings you're using gives you an hyperfocal distance that's shorter than the focus distance. And you can really work out the numbers super, super fast using the depth of field calculator on the map on the planet. And to use the depth of field calculator, just tap on the map settings button. You have it next to the plus button on the map. And then on the map tools, tap on depth of field and go back to the map. 
Now, all you have to do is to introduce your settings, your camera, I'm going to use the Nikon Z6 that Tony uses, the focal length, I'm going to use a 500mm for this shot, uh, aperture, I will go to f8, um, focus distance, I'm going to tell, I want to focus at the black pin distance, remember that the, that the black pin is on my subject, because I'm going to be focusing on my subject, okay, shooting mode, portrait, and uh, shooting direction, the last one, is aligned with black pin. This way I have my field of view aligned with my subject. Here you see what will be in the photo and outside the photo, which is pretty cool. You also see how big the moon will appear in the photo if you have switched on the moon, show moon size on, uh, on the map. And you can switch on show moon size but on the map settings button on the map layer of the moon and make sure that the show moon size button is switched on. Okay, and where is the hyperfocal distance? Well, the hyperfocal distance in photo pills is represented by this uh, tree icon you see on the map. It tells me that the hyperfocal is 1.04 kilometers. And my shooting distance, according to the top panel, is 10.8 kilometers. You see that the hyperfocal distance falls in front of the uh, each shoulder than the focusing distance where my subject is. And this makes that when I'm focusing on something that's behind the hyperfocal distance, well, infinity will be acceptably sharp. And that's the reason that you see the depth of field far limit placed at infinity here. Yeah, you, you have it here just above the Google uh, logo. So wait, super simple. This tool is gold, use it. Another thing that can give you a blurry morning in the photo is a really slow shutter speed, a long exposure time. Because due to the rotation of the Earth, if you're using a too long exposure time, exposure time above one second, you might get motion blur on the Moon. So when the light goes down, don't be afraid to push the ISO up to keep the shutter speed under one second, if possible. If you always shoot the same type of photos, you'll get bored. And boredom is the most deadly enemy. Nobody wants to get bored, right? The good news is that when it comes to the moon, you have multiple, multiple options. You can go long using a telephoto lens. You can go wide using a shorter focal length. You can photograph a thin moon. You can shoot in all the different types of natural light. You can try different subjects. Really, the possibilities are endless. So the conclusion is, it's impossible to get bored when you're photographing the moon. Now you wish to learn more about how to photograph the moon, you can do two things. The first one is to watch this video where I explain how to photograph the moon step by step. It's a very short video. And the second one is to download, read and study well, study, study well, our super detailed moon photography guide. I'm gonna leave a link in the description of this video and in the first comment below. Download it. Also, these are just my seven moon photography mistakes. If you have any other mistakes to share, please let me know in the comments. I would love to learn from your mistakes too. And as always, if you like this video, give me a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next Wednesday with another video. And remember that you have the power to imagine, plan, and shoot legendary photos. Bye.